New data exclusive to CNBC pointing to more turbulent times for the airline industry. CNBC teamed up with Change Research to poll voters in key battleground states. And when asked if they think, is it safe to fly? Only 24 percent of respondents said yes. That sentiment also ringing true as Boeing shares dropped today and missed earnings. The jet maker plans to cut its production. Phil LeBeau spoke to the CEO earlier today. He joins us now with more. Phil. And Melissa, when you take a look at shares of Boeing, nobody's surprised that the stock moved lower today. As you mentioned, the company did report an earnings miss. Uh, they lost $2.4 billion uh, in the second quarter, a wider than expected loss. And obviously, COVID-19 shutting down the assembly line, fewer deliveries, all of that weighed on the company. Three things came out today uh, from the company as they were saying, this is what we're expecting, not only for the rest of this year, but as you look out over the next couple of years. You got lower production rates or a slower ramp up of other models like the 737 MAX, that will likely mean, or possibly mean, we should say, more job cuts. Remember, they're already eliminating about 16 to 19,000 jobs this year. Uh, and then you have the airline recovery. CEO Dave Calhoun said, look, I agree with what they're saying on the international level in terms of the airline recovery is going to be at least 2023, maybe 2024. Nobody's quite sure. Uh, and we're seeing that here in this country where passenger levels are down what, 20, you know, they're at 76%, 74%. It's just a fraction of where it was at this time last year. Here's Dave Calhoun talking with us this morning on Squawk on the Street about his view of when we might see a recovery. Just that early recovery post the first spike uh, and the fact that bookings came back and they came back fairly robustly, for me says that the underlying demand equation still exists and that eventually we will, we will solve this. And as you take a look at shares of Boeing and Airbus, the reason that we're also gonna show you Airbus is that we get the first half results from Airbus tomorrow. Look, we're gonna see the same thing that we saw with Boeing in terms of a terrible quarter with production and deliveries. They're also in the midst of severe job cuts over at a number of their facilities in Europe, simply because airlines around the world are cutting back on their orders, deferring or canceling. And one last thing, Melissa, all of this brings up the question, you're not seeing many people flying right now. Are the airlines going to roll out special fares, like $15 between Houston and Newark or on Frontier? Friends fly free. You will see more of that because the wow. airlines, they've got to put people in these seats as much as possible. And this brings up the bigger, the bigger question down the road. When do you see some pricing power when it comes to fares? But nobody's worried about that right now in the airline yeah. industry. They simply want to get people on board. Phil, thank you, as always. Phil LeBeau, um, just out of curiosity, I, I pulled up United. You can fly to Orlando between August 14th and 18th for $27. Or Tampa, Tim, you can, you can go there for $27. It costs you more to get to the airport than to get to Tampa at this point. Yeah, no, no bid flying to, to Florida to, right now for a lot of reasons. It's <laughs> yeah. hotter in New York, by the way. Um, I, I think you have a case here with Boeing. Also, you know, we didn't really talk about the need to see Max. I, I, I recognize that there's not necessarily high demand for the 737 Max, but you need to see delivery start uh, in early 2021. Uh, the liquidity story for Boeing is actually better than expected. So they've got about 30 billion in liquidity. Uh, they burned less in in the second in in the last quarter, the second quarter, uh, around 5.6 versus you know, 6.4 expected. Uh, but it, it's it's yes, this is going to be a slow slog. I think the most important important thing is that this is a company that also has a defense business, um, which hasn't been destroyed. Uh, and that from a defense perspective, I, I think it's, it's, it's still a, a critical company to our country. Uh, but that the commercial aircraft business is really about liquidity. And I think the company is certainly going to be there to the other side of this. But when people start flying again is something we talk about every night in, in, in different shades of, of uh, you know, the economy that we're looking at. So um, you don't have to run out and buy Boeing tomorrow. But I, mm -hmm. I think in the longer term, uh, this is a stock that I've been long and I've been uh, I've certainly traded around it, but I remain long. Uh, and I'm very confident that this company is coming back. Normalized earnings for Boeing uh, are, are, are something that are more difficult to judge than a lot of these other companies. But if we're putting that to 2022 for a lot of other companies, this company is very cheap here. Guy. A few weeks ago, and I know you have a memory like an elephant, Mel. Steel you trap. We played the game that you love, uh, trade it or fade it. Mm. And Karen, Karen, the great Karen Feynman was on, and Boeing was what you asked her about. And to her credit, when I think the stock was like 198 or so, she said fade it, and we had a conversation, and we talked about the entry level of 165. Well, if you look up today on your Google machines, you'll see 
I think the stock closed around 165. So this is about as good an entry point as you've had for quite some time. And Tim is right in terms of their cash flow position for sure. But we all know that that can get pretty precarious pretty quickly as well, especially if this we're talking about uh, 2024 being somewhat normalized. And quite frankly, I'm not sure how they're going to have that clarity. So 165 makes sense, but you, know, you wonder if that S&P downgrade is around the corner. Just something to think about.